Hi everyone. Just checking if people are coming in now. Seems like there are. Hi Alice. Hi Florence. Hi Neve. Millie. Wow, there's a lot of you now. I can't keep up. Becky. Hi. Great. Well, we seem to have quite a few people. Um, so uh, maybe we should get started. Um, so hi, my name is Elizabeth Karani and I am an opera singer. Um, I came from a musical theatre background and um, decided to train to be an opera singer. So I thought today I would just discuss uh, my path and the general path um, to becoming an opera singer because I know it's uh, quite different to um, to uh, the musical theatre training, although of course I don't know a huge amount of that, about that because I haven't done it. So um, yeah, I hope that this will, uh, if any of you are interested in becoming opera singers, it'll um, break down some barriers, answer a few questions. Um, what is your favourite thing about opera that you don't get from musical theatre? Hmm. Well, maybe I think I'll answer that a bit later. I can tie that into something else that I talk about. Um, I should also say that I am a huge musical theatre fan, so I'm definitely, I can try and compare the two, but I love them. I love them both, so I will always go and watch both of them. Um, yeah, so today I'll just talk about how, um, about the path and training and um, how you, uh, you would go about becoming an opera singer. Uh, so firstly, um, oh, it's not wanting to go, oh, there we go, okay. BYMT. It was actually YMT UK when I did it many, many, many moons ago. Um, uh, don't try and guess my age from <laughs> all of these numbers. But um, yeah, so I started, I did two uh, Easter workshops, um, which were fantastic. And then in 2005, I was in Monte Cristo. Um, and I was just kind of a, an ensemble member for that, but then I sang in the uh, variety evening. I don't know if they still do those. And then uh, the director decided to uh, give me a part. Uh, I don't know if he created it right at the end. I'm not sure, um, but I got to have a role. I think I sang Mercedes, but um, to be honest, I can't really remember the name of the role. So if someone sang that role, I'm really sorry. I thought it was me, but it might not have been. Um, and then I uh, did Frankenstein. Oh, and that was my uh, main experience of YMT. And I did two shows of um, two summers in Plymouth. And as you can see from this photo on the right, um, on the left hand, <laughs> left hand kind of corner slightly towards the middle you'll see Ed Sheeran so yes I was in the cast with him um, and he was lovely he was great and he's done so well and I remember him playing his uh, his tiny little guitar to us in uh, in the variety show and it was just we knew he was going to be a star but who could have uh, dreamt that it would he would be such a big star um, and then I also uh, did Frankenstein in London and uh, but that was great as well. I sang uh, Elizabeth, who was uh, Dr. Frankenstein's wife, um, my name as well. So it was just easy to cast me in that role. Um, and yeah, they were just some of the best summers and I loved, um, I loved the whole, my whole B, um, BYMT experience. I even <clears throat> loved the auditions. They were so fun. So if you're thinking of auditioning, how old were you when you involved in BYMT? Oh no, Millie. <laughs> um, I'm not sure actually. Um, 2005, uh, <laughs> my husband's laughing in the corner. I'm 31 now. So um, I think my last um, Frankenstein, the one I did in London, I was already training at that point to be um, an opera singer. I was already away at Royal Northern. So um, I would have been about 19. <clears throat> um, and my maths is terrible. I can sing opera, but I can't count. So um, yeah, you work out from, from there how old I was, I guess. <laughs> Um, but also my mum actually worked for BOMT, uh, she worked, she helped run the bursary uh, scheme. So yes, very, very much involved and loved it. Um, yeah, so uh, when I was quite uh, young, I used to go to pantomimes. Uh, I 
I'm sure most of you know what a pantomime is, maybe in South, Southern Germany. Oh, it's all right, Millie, I forgive you. <laughs> uh, in Southern Germany you might not have pantomimes, um, but they're, they're things that happen at Christmas and they're just big uh, shows, celebrations, and they're, they're a bit silly. Um, but I, always, I was so, so jealous of the ensemble girls. So I knew from the age of about six that I wanted to be a performer. And um, up until I was about, 18, I um, focused my whole, you raised your hand, what does that mean? <laughs> Sorry, Jude, you raised your hand and I'm not quite sure what that means. Do you want to type it in the q and a if you have a, if you have a question? Um, yeah, so I, um, my whole uh, training when I was a teenager was geared to becoming a musical theatre singer. So, um, yeah, these are the things that I did when I was a teenager. Uh, I did GCC and A-level music, drama, theatre studies, loved it, great. Um, I was also a member of uh, Lane, the Lane Theatre Arts uh, Junior Squad, which was fantastic, although I don't know if they still do it like this, but um, we were all split into groups and, because, and it was all tiered. And because I was a great singer, I was in the top group, but most people go to lanes because they're absolutely amazing dancers. So that meant I was in the top group for dancing as well. And it was absolutely awful. My mom said she used to come and pick me up and I was at least two bars behind everyone else. So um, yeah, when, they, when the singing teacher approached me and said, I think you should audition for the, um, the college here, um, I said, oh, but I'm, I'm not a very good dancer. He said, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't then. So yeah, that was my career at Lane, Lane Theatre Arts over. Um, I also did other Amdram stuff. Uh, Kenley Hoddy Workshop was my main thing. And um, yeah, I just learned how to be on stage basically. And you don't, uh, when you're an adult, you realize how amazing these experiences are and how much you learn as a teenager from things like BYMT and the skills you gain and just the confidence really um yeah it's in invaluable I'm about to start A-levels and nervous to take music because I I feel I'm not very good at it I really want to take it and feel very nervous do you have an advice any advice um <clears throat> well I would say uh when I was a teenager I uh, I always used to say that I, I thought it, uh, uh, well, singers were split into two, two categories. There were academic ones and there were ones who kind of um, felt, sang with passion. I don't know, just kind of felt it. And I um, thought I was in that camp. Um, but now I would say I'm probably um, <laughs> more academic in some ways. I do a lot of contemporary music. But to be honest, um, I only really became a good musician um, I don't know, like maybe five years ago when I was 15, no, I'm joking, when I was 26, I, before I, I wasn't very good, basically. Um, I really wanted to learn. I wasn't very good at theory. I wasn't very good at oral. I was not good at anything, basically. Um, I wasn't terrible, but uh, I did my grade five theory three times and failed. And then when I eventually did pass, I only got the pass mark. Um, but I, I, I would say that I wasn't that gifted academically, musically, um, but I, I still got an A. I still, I don't know how, but I did. I mean, a lot of it is performance. I, Millie, I don't know um, if you're a, um, if you're a performer, a lot of the mark is down to your performance. So if you're, if you're strong there, then you shouldn't have any problems. I mean, I'd recommend it anyway and um yeah those skills will come later if you go into the profession um yeah i hope that answers your question uh i also did a lot of dance uh, i obviously did it at lanes but i did uh, I, in the evenings i went and did ballet tap and jazz and as i mentioned earlier i was not very good at it um so um, I just knew I had to do it if I wanted to go into musical theatre. I mean, it's just a necessary evil, isn't it? But I'm sure I would have struggled a lot later if I'd gone into um, the profession, unless I just stood still and did all those roles that you stand still for. What are they? Not sure. Um, I also played the flute. Uh, again, wasn't very good at it. Uh, did up to grade seven, but I don't know. 
really how I think I failed a few of them and had to retake them. Uh, did you do singing exams? And if so, what board were you examined on? Yes. So um, I, uh, when I, I only started singing when I was about 12. Well, I sang before that, obviously, but I didn't have singing lessons. And I started off with a musical theatre teacher. And he was fantastic. But when I got to about 15, he um, decided that he couldn't teach me anymore, not because I was a terror, but because he felt that he had reached um, the level that he, he could with me. He couldn't really teach me anymore. Um, uh, especially for things like singing exams. So I, because I wanted to do my ABRSM, so I went to a teacher called Joan Davin Luby, who um, I really owe everything to singing wise. She, um, she was a classical singer. She was a mezzo soprano, which is in between an alto and a um, soprano. She, was, um, she sang professionally and she took me on and I then ended up doing my ABRSM exams and I don't know how much it's changed but at that point you do you'd have to do a few classical things or at least um art songs so um I did that so I've never done um the trinity exams or anything I'm not sure now what the uh difference is or anything I just know and just knew, know at the time that um the, you didn't have to do you didn't have to do grade five theory I think for the trinity ones but you did for the ABR, ABRSM um, so I, I did do I did do those and they were great. I was supposed to do my diploma as well, but I uh, went on a holiday to <clears throat> Zanti in the summer with my friends and came back with no voice, so I <laughs> couldn't do that one. Um, would you recommend taking A level slash B tech if you haven't done a music and GCSE? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how different they are because I know with things like maths, obviously, they, there's a big um, step up. I don't know a huge amount about B tech, I have to be honest, but I did have a friend in my year who did B tech rather than um, A level, and obviously we got to the same level, so I'm not sure how much difference it um, made, but I'm also very academic. I'm, so I'm just reading Neves. I'm considering doing A-levels revolving around science and maths. Do you think that this is a good idea? So, uh, Neve, I, um, you're welcome, Millie. I, uh, I can only really speak from an operatic point of view because I don't know um, the deal with musical theatre really. And I know it's um, the musical theatre profession is um, much younger than the operatic profession. So um, a lot of people, do um, an academic undergraduate, uh, they go off and they do, I don't know, yeah, science, maths, whatever. And then they come and they do a postgraduate. And I, and of course, in the first month or so, they're totally overwhelmed and um, have no idea what's going on, but they very quickly catch up. So from an operatic point of view, I don't think it's um, a problem. But, the, but they also have um, postgraduates uh, at, a postgraduate certainly at the Royal Academy, which is a musical theatre um, course. So you could go away and do an academic course if that's what you wanted to do. And then if you still wanted to pursue musical theatre later on, you could go and um, do a postgraduate somewhere. I'm unsure if any, anywhere like Mountview or, GSC or GSA or anything offer um, postgraduates. You would have to check with that one. But um, it's certainly, certainly possible um, to do both. Um, and I will, is it wise to only take music and theatre related? Mm. Well, um, is, uh, is it wise to only take th music and theatre related A-levels? Um, uh, I mean, it was wise for me because I've gone into the profession, but um, I think it is. I also did English literature. And in my, um, for my AS levels, which I don't think they exist anymore, so old, um, I did uh, history and critical thinking and yeah, that was it. So uh, no, I mean, with theatre studies, I mean, I, I didn't have to necessarily be a performer. I could have gone into technical stuff. So I, I the possibilities to do other stuff was still there. Um, I think it's wise i mean i've never taken a different path so and it's worked out for me <laughs> so <laughs> i don't know if you want to do music and theater then yeah but they, you can you can you can do other things and then train it's 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 entirely up to you and in just 
do what you think you're going to do well in and what you enjoy because there's no point in being miserable for a couple of years. Anyway, I'm going to move on. <laughs> um, so singing teacher, so I was with Joan Davin Luby and she said, um, why don't you go and train classically first and then you can come back and do all the roles like Christine and um, Les Miserables and stuff and all of the kind of older operas, uh, operas musical theatre um, because that was what my voice was suited to um, and I think she knew full well I would probably go and fall in love with opera and decide to do that instead so yes um, let's see what's next so I went to a place uh, called oh uh, I've heard so many different things so I was hoping you'd say what you said oh I'm pleased that you I gave you the right answer it's, you've, it's your life. You've got one chance at it. Do what you want to do. Um, so yes, I went to um, a conservatoire. So a conservatoire is uh, different from a musical theatre college. Um, it's just a really posh name that they give to music and drama schools. Um, I went to RNCM, which is in the top left corner, and for my undergraduate, and then I went to Guildhall, which is in the right-hand corner um, for my postgraduate and also op course. Um, and uh, in the bottom corner is Royal College of Music, so they're all pretty impressive buildings in their own way. Um, so yeah, so I went to a conservatoire, and uh, here is a list of the UK conservatoires. And this is a picture of the Royal Academy, at the top and Trinity Laban at the Laban? Laban? I've always said Laban but now that I've said it out loud I'm not sure if it's right. Um, so you go to um, one of these colleges and um, all of the colleges uh, teach different disciplines so um, I think all of them, yeah all of them will teach music, um, opera, um, and also you would be there with a load of instrumentalists. Um, but some of the other colleges like Guildhall, uh, as you might know, um, offer a, an acting course, a really prestigious acting course. So you'll be there with um, actors as well. Um, and some of the other ones offer dance. So you would be there with dancers as well. Um, I didn't go to one with dancers. So yes, um, as you can see, they're all over, all over the, um, country so you can go basically where you want to go and what, what where suits you I was actually um supposed to be going to Guildhall for my undergraduate that was where my teacher had gone and um I'd got in and everything but I was from London and I went up to Royal Northern and I just fell in love with it and I also really wanted to have all my friends were leaving London and going off to different cities and having that real like university lifestyle and I um, wanted that for myself as well. I wanted, I wanted a mixture. So I, um, yeah, I went to Royal Northern and it was absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, so I will go, I'm wanting to extend my singing range. I'm a bass and find it hard to find songs that fit my range. Are there any exercises you'd suggest doing? Um, hi, Jude. Um, you... I don't know how old you are, but basses, wow. If you're a bass, <laughs> that is great. Um, if you go into uh, opera, there's, there's not many of you and you are all constantly employed <laughs> and paid a lot of money. So um, good for you. But the thing is with being a bass is that it takes a lot of patience because um, generally you have to just get a bit older to extend your range and just go into uh, get into your voice I mean generally opera is a opera is a really really long career so probably patience I mean I don't have any exercises because I'm a soprano um, so I go the other way but I just try and extend my range by singing up there the whole time um, just every day just uh, just simple exercises so I'm just kind of getting my muscle memory, as we call it. Um, it's when, you, when you, you automatically do something without thinking about it, um, because your muscles remember it. Um, I would say it might work going the other way. So maybe try that. Sorry, I'm not an expert on extending the range, but I would just say, just keep going down there 
and just getting your voice used to it, basically. Um, okay, so you're 18. Oh, well, Jude, that's excellent. You've got, you've got a, you've got a, you've got a while yet, but, um, yeah, I, do you have a good singing teacher? Have you been to a classical singing teacher by any chance? Um, it might be good to try and find a bass um, or a male singing teacher who might have uh, more of an idea, but it sounds like if you are um, a bass and operatic bass, you would benefit from going to a classically trained singer. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, good luck with your career it should be a good one um okay so i thought i'd talk a bit about applications and auditions because they're obviously a bit different to musical theater um so we have a thing called KUCAS. i'm sure you've heard of UCAS. um this is the conservatoire version of that um um so they, uh, some of the colleges they let you you, you apply directly to them and some of them um, are KUCAS and they're Pretty much the same as UCAS, personal statements and all that kind of stuff. But then, obviously, you have to go and do an audition. Um, what is the difference between a postgrad and undergrad? No, that's not stupid at all. Um, undergraduate is uh, something you do. Uh, it's uh, usually a bachelor of music, um, which is something you do when you're 18, or you know, you can be older, older obviously, and especially with opera because people tend to be um, older. So you do an undergrad first, um, and um, I will talk about it a bit later. But the postgrad comes after an undergrad. So no, it's not a stupid question at all. If you study musical theatre degree at drama school for three years, would you then be better to go into opera to do a postgrad or earlier? Um, Florence, I'm not sure really. I don't actually know many people who have gone from musical theatre to opera. I know a lot of people who've done it the other way around. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, no, I would probably say it's a very different technique, um, which I'll also talk about later. So um, if, I would say if you want to do musical theatre, do musical theatre. If you want to do opera, do opera. Um, probably. That might be wrong. Um, if you do opera, you do have the choice to go back to musical theatre. So I would say that way around. Um, um, hmm. I'll come back to these te technical things. Yeah, I'll come back to these technical things in a little bit, um, Neve and Jasmine. So I haven't forgotten you. Um, okay, so auditions wise, uh, you have to do uh, three contrasting pieces, which will be uh, classical, they can be art song. I mean, you can just take things that you've done on ABRSM or the Trinity, you haven't seen the um, syllabus, but um, three contrasting pieces. Um, you'll have to do some poetry and pro or, or prose. So I think I actually did the end of the Tempest. I did Prospero's speech, which was a bit weird. I don't really know why I did that. I think I was probably studying the Tempest at the time and thought it was cool. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but you have to do that um, from, um, from memory, just so they can see how you speak and how your um, speaking voice is sitting and how you act and your confidence etc etc you will have to do sight reading and this is the thing that worried me the most i am a terrible sight reader i'm still pretty bad to this day um, i'm a good learner but i'm not a good sight reader <clears throat> you just have to get through it basically um, don't stress about it too much if you're a great singer and you can't sight read it's not gonna stop you from getting in basically. So just try your best. Um, this doesn't happen everywhere, but in some places you'll have to do a text and movement workshop. I never had to do it, but I did have a <clears throat> look on the websites earlier and they seem to have to do that now. So I don't know what that involves, but I'm sure it'd just be games and stuff. Um, and then you have to do an interview uh, just to talk about your goals and everything, everything like that. Um, would you suggest training classically before going into the musical theatre industry? Um, I think it can certainly, it, it's, yes, 
I, I would I would recommend it, but I it's not it's not necessary. Um, it depends what your voice is like, really. If you have um, more of a like belty voice, I guess. I don't know. If you wanted to sing Phantom or um, uh, or your Les Mis or something, then you could go and train classically um, first, certainly, and then go into musical theatre. But you, it doesn't matter. You don't you don't have to. But um, you'll get if you go and actually I'll come back to you, Joseph, actually, because there's a I'll talk about it a bit in a second. Um, oh yeah, postgraduate is uh, just more of the above. You just have to do more in the audition. That's it, really. Um, oh, I forgot there was a on this. That is just uh, the concert hall in Royal, at Royal Northern. You wouldn't have to do your audition here, don't worry, that's huge. But I just thought it was nice. So yes, undergraduate training. This is uh, the Royal Northern in Manchester. Um, Someone was saying they're from Manchester. You, you probably recognise it on Oxford Road. Um, yeah, and I just loved it. So I will talk about my training there. Um, let me go. Where's Joseph's question gone? I was going to talk about it now. What was I going to say? Okay. Um, studies. So at uh, a conservatoire, you will have to do academic studies. Uh, don't worry too much. Um, I think musical theatre, I don't know uh, when you train whether you do any academic studies, but you do have to do them um, if you go to a conservatoire. But I was never great academically, so and I'm, there was so much help. So don't let that stress you. I think it's only 40% of your grade anyway. Um, you do dance and movement because we do actually dance a bit. It's obviously not to the extent of musical theatre, it's more just waltzing and you learning to use your body and stuff like that. And we do drama um, because it used to be that opera singers just parked and barked on the stage, as we like to say in the profession, but nowadays you actually have to act. So uh, we do that. And uh, we also study different languages because you may or may not know that opera um, is sung in many different languages. So um, you'll learn German, French and Italian mainly and just so you have a good understanding of it um, and so you can read it and pronounce it all and no general words. Um, I don't speak any of them fluently and I was never that gifted with languages. I'm making myself sound real stupid, aren't I? <laughs> But I, I wasn't great, um, but it's, I'm good at languages now. I don't speak them, but I can, you know, it's not, it's not you, you walk out of your undergraduate and you can speak all three of them. Don't worry. Um, and you, uh, you all would also do Russian and Czech because uh, we sing in those languages as well. Um, but the main thing is uh, your vocal lessons. So, uh, the main thing about being an opera singer is actually singing really well and um, just always making an amazing noise on every single, every single note. So um, uh, you may or may not know that we do not use microphones um, in opera unless it's in an arena or something like that. But if you're on stage at an opera house, you uh, would always, um, you wouldn't be right. So you've got to be heard the whole time. So um, yeah, we learn how to be loud, but how to be safe. Uh, it's a really, really long career um, in opera if you want it to be. I mean, there are still people singing into their 80s. Um, that's actually what uh, made me want to stay in opera because I thought, oh, well, I want it to be long. I don't want to have a short shelf life in this career. So you learn how to sing beautifully, safely, and loudly, basically. <laughs> um, so what, what do the academic studies focus on? Um, oh, musicianship as well. Sorry, I'll come back to the academic. Uh, musicianship as well. We, they, they put all the singers together because I think, well, it's, we're slightly different to the instrumentalists, we, I think. I don't know. They put us together anyway. Um, and... It, we, we just did it once a week for a few hours. It's just oral, uh, oral and theory and all that kind of thing. We had an amazing teacher and he made sure we all passed, even though even if we were terrible at it. So also don't stress about that. But it's just, um, it's only going to help. It's only to help you, really. It's not, it's not really a, a test. Um, academic 
studies. Um, they're all different, really. I, um, God, in the first year, I think, I think I remember doing an essay on sonata form. Um, you might find that really interesting. I don't think I did. Don't think I did very well. Um, but you'll also study, I mean, you'll also study the history of music, hist uh, history of classical music. Um, so I definitely did an essay on Verdi opera and I did an elective on contemporary opera. So yeah, it's mainly, it's mainly just history and different practices and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's quite interesting. Wasn't very good at it, but it was interesting. Um, so for assessments, would you recommend either doing a foundation course before a three year course or postgrad after the year course? I don't know of any that, um, I don't know if there are, I don't, there might be foundation courses for musical theatre, but I don't know if there are for opera. So um, I don't think they exist. I don't think they do. I might be completely wrong. So I wouldn't recommend doing one because I don't think they exist. Um, sorry, Florence. I hope that that's kind of helpful. Um, um, let me have a look at Heidi. I just, uh, I'm 15, mezzo soprano, musical theatre, play uh, piano, lambda, drama, and um, teaches me classical opera. As my voice for I'm so teaching opera side. Do you think I should learn any dancing? Um, well, if you think you're going to go into opera, that's great. Really, really great. Um, don't, uh, I think dancing, yes, do. And you're not, you're not going to do it to the level necessarily. You might do um, to musical theatre, but it's always great to have one of those skills and um, keep fit and just really understand how your body works because that's really um, fundamental in opera singing is, uh, yeah, knowing how your body works. So I would say, yes, do do dancing. Don't stress about getting all your exams and all that kind of stuff, but definitely do it. Um, I went to stream my range out. Do you know any exercises that help with that? I'm a female, if that helps, Jasmine. Hmm. I would say, um, what do you need to do? I've never had, I've never, uh, the problems with opera singing is for mezzo, this is generally going up, I think. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't, worry i mean our I, I, male voices break obviously when they're teenagers but um, female voices also break about five times or something in our lives no, it might be even more than that um so your voice is i don't how, did you say how old you were i'm not sure your voice is probably going to break again so i wouldn't worry about extending downwards too much um i think just focus on singing within your your speaking speaking range um yeah, I think that's probably the healthiest thing to do for now. So don't worry about going down too much. Um, how much are we doing daily? How much practice? Um, practice. <laughs> um, at 18, I don't know how much I was doing. I was probably doing, um, I don't know, maybe a couple of hours in total a week, if that. Um, but when you, when you go and train, Obviously you do quite a lot. Uh, you don't want to uh, damage your voice at all, so don't go over the top with it. Um, just, just regular, maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes a day, just on exercises and stuff uh, for uh, four days a week or something would be healthy, I would say. Um, I probably didn't do that then, but don't overdo it. That's probably the main thing. Don't go, don't go crazy, but um, do practice a bit. Do learn your music, but don't don't at your at your age. I wouldn't worry too much. Once you go go and train, then you will um, focus on technique and stuff. But for now, it's just kind of getting used to it. Okay, so assessments. Um, so you have to do essays. You have to do musicianship tests and blah 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 blah. Um, but mainly, it'll be about performance. It'll be in the operas, and um, depending on where you go, some places have opera schools, so they're usually taken. Um, the roles are usually taken by the old people in the opera schools. Um, but if you go to Royal Northern, you have the opportunity to audition from first year undergrad. So that was also one of the things that I. Um, made me want to go there because I wanted to perform straight away. Um, I did a play at one point that I was assessed on. I did actually do musical theatre. Um, 
but it was a very short elective, but it allowed me to kind of get that out of my system <laughs> um, once a year. So uh, yeah, you just, it's mainly performing that you are, you're obsessed on. Um, is ballet ever used in opera? I'm doing lessons now, however, as a male, I'm not sure it would be entirely useful. Oh, it would be useful. I mean, there are, I mean, there is, it is ballet in um, opera, but it tends to be done by ballet, by ballet dancers. Um, so, but it is, uh, ballet is so useful for just understanding your body. Um, so yeah, I would say definitely carry on. Uh, you won't necessarily be in your tights or anything, but your posture will be fantastic and you'll know how to use your whole body. So yes, I would say carry on doing that. Okay, more training. So um, I'll just whiz through this. So postgraduate, um, I've already discussed that with um, you and so you can do that after your undergrad whether you've done and um, you I mean after undergrad you can just go off and go into the world but most people because as I've said before it's a really long career um, most people tend to do more training um, so yeah you can do a postgraduate um, whether you've done a, a, a degree in opera at first or an academic degree and um, that's where you want to be heading and you'll get a master of music uh, performance or performance um, and then we have a thing called opera school not all of the conservatoires have them but uh, Guildhall does, Royal College, uh, Royal Academy, uh, Royal Scottish uh, these are just extra training and they're also fantastic for um, people coming to watch you um, and seeing you and yeah learning but also a bit of a platform. We also have things called um, Opera studios. So uh, I went to the National Opera Studio, which is here. Uh, again, you don't have to do it, but um, it's more training and another platform. We also have uh, opera studios which are connected to opera houses, um, such as the Yeti Parker at the Royal Opera House, or um, a young art. It's kind of a young artist scheme opera studio at um, English National Opera, which is at the Coliseum. Um, they're not there the whole time, but they are on a kind of young artist scheme connected with that house but we also have opera studios all over the world it's a real global profession so um, a lot of people head over to Germany um, and it just means you're connected with that house um, that opera house and you do roles generally smaller ones but um yeah you just get to have more performing experience and get paid basically um okay what's next oh this is, um, these are some of my friends from uh, the National Opera Studio. It's some before, we're performing some contemporary scenes at Wilkins Music Hall in London. Um, yeah, I just thought they looked quite funny, so I put it in. The opera industry. Um, so, uh, I'm not even sure what slide this is. Um, yeah, the opera industry. So, it's slightly different to. Um, musical theatre and how it works uh, you're not you're not contracted to one show for a year two years however long it is with musical theatre you just go from contract to contract and um uh so we have uh six or more i think it's six um full-time opera companies in uh, the uk and um all around, uh, yeah, two in London, one in Cardiff, one in Glasgow, one in Leeds, and NI Opera as well. Ooh, it's in Belfast. Dublin? Oh God, that's really bad, isn't it? I'm not sure. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so you would just go and work at these companies um, in a role. You would get contracted to do a role there. Um, we also have loads of other companies. This is only five of them, but there are millions um, that also work around... Uh, Throughout, throughout the year, some of them are summer festivals, some of them are in the autumn, um, and yes, a lot of them are touring. Um, summer festivals are a really big thing in uh, opera. These are, I think, most of the summer festivals. I think there are probably a few more. Um, so yeah, a lot of people work out the summer in these cool houses and um, these tents and stuff and here's, here's the Millennium Centre in Cardiff down here um, which is the home of WNO um, so yeah that's we work uh, Monday to Saturday rehearsal wise quite normal 
The difference with musical theatre and opera is that we do not work for eight shows a week or the crazy amount is that they do. We, um, it's a real, I mean, it's physical for musical theatre as well, but it's a real, because you're not using microphones and stuff, you, um, you really can't be doing eight shows a week. You just lose your voice and you, your career would end pretty quickly. So um, we do, about, you probably wouldn't do more than four shows a week in general. So budget and funding and company wise it would vary but um in general uh you will just do a few a few shows a week um yeah so there we go i will also say about agents we we do have agents in the opera profession it's not quite like um musical theater i think not everyone has one and you can have a career in opera without an agent it just makes it easier um, especially if you're going from contract to contract every every couple of months or some of them are overlapping and stuff so it just makes your life a lot easier here are some pictures of me <laughs> in um, in said opera companies um, on the right here i am um singing um I'm singing Musetta in La Boheme, if you know that opera, at Opera Holland Park, which is in Opera Holland Park in London, um, which was fantastic. Uh, on the bottom left, I am uh, singing for Mid Wales Opera, singing Tatiana in Eugene on Yegen, which is a Russian opera. Um, that was a tour in Mid Wales, around Mid Wales. <laughs> and then you might recognize at the top, Regent's Park. Uh, this was in summer 2019. I sang Gretel in Hansel and Gretel, uh, which was a, an amazing, amazing show. And we're actually Olivier Award nominees. So that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah, so opera's everywhere, basically. <laughs> um, okay. Speaking of it being everywhere, as I said, it's a real global profession. So uh, it's everywhere. We have, uh, it's, People think it's it's mainly in Italy and it is is in Italy a lot, but it's definitely in Germany. Uh, we've got 59 opera houses over there, and their system is a bit different to ours. They have a thing called the Fach system, which is not a rude word. It is F A C H, and um, once you're trained professionally, you it kind of expands the whole soprano, alto, mezzo soprano, tenor, bass thing. And um, for example, I am a light lyric soprano. You've got coloratura sopranos, who are people who sing real fast and high. Um, you've got held and tenors, who are the people who sing all the Wagner. It kind of, yeah, you, you get a few more names on your, on your voice type. Um, so uh, they have this Fach system. So you would go over there and you'd be contracted to one house for a year, two years, and you would sing all of the roles that are within that um, category so i think it's a lot of hard work but it because uh, you'd be singing three different operas during a week but it's a uh, stable income and they're some of the most prestigious houses in the world um but there are opera houses everywhere here are just a few um the ones some that i found on wikipedia there's loads more than this so yeah you really really get to see the world with this profession um, so yeah, uh, in conclusion, you should go and see opera. <laughs> I personally hadn't seen a lot of opera when I was a teenager. I probably, before I went to Royal Northern, I maybe only saw one or two. And one, one of them was, I didn't like. Um, you, I do, do you think that if you, if you say you don't like opera, that's like saying you don't like cheese, I mean, you might not like cheese, but there are so many different types of cheese that you might like one of them. So I, same musical theater, isn't it? You might not like some musical theater, but you might love other ones. So I, I mean, there's opera, there's opera that I don't like. Um, but the important thing is to go and try it because it is an amazing experience. Um, and I think we'll go back to the first question that was asked, what is your favorite thing about opera that you don't get from musical theater? Well, um, people, we don't use, we don't use microphones. So it's all, it's this huge raw emotion that's coming out of um, someone. It's so loud. Um, 
and it's just amazing to watch and also we have full orchestras um so it tends to be pretty loud and it's always well, not always but it's generally quite a big spectacle it's if you can see there's one at the bottom here which is um, the amphitheater in Verona which is amazing you've got Opera North here on the left give us what you have too much of um yeah opera really has something to say as well um I mean I I wouldn't say um I I, I couldn't I love them both equally obviously I'm an opera singer but I, lo I really do love really do love musical theatre so um I'm not going to speak about um, but I would say that's probably what it is. It's, it's a really overwhelming experience that's uh, not ampl amplified in any way. It's as loud as musical theatre, but there are no mics, which is probably the main difference. Um, so yeah, go see opera. You you don't know, you might love it. And also, opera has this reputation for being expensive, and it and sometimes it is, but it's not. It's nowhere near as expensive as musical theatre. Um, in my experience, or football or anything, I mean, for the for at E and O now, you can go for free if you're under 18. Same as Opera Holland Park, um, there are they have um, under 18 free tickets. Um, there are also schemes for students where you can get really cheap tickets for 25 pounds, which is cheap compared to musical theatre. Although you can get some cheap ones, but you know, you know what I'm saying. It's not it's not this big hundreds and hundreds of pounds that um, opera has this uh, reputation for having. So yeah, go and see it and see if you like it. Try a few. Um, some of them have the same stories as musical theatre. So uh, Miss Saigon, Madame Butterfly is the same story. Um, Rent is the same story as Le Boheme. They even have similar names. So Mimi is Mimi. Uh, Roger is Rodolfo. Um, Mark is Marcello. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, go, go and see it. So you might know the story, but don't worry if you, um, you're worried about the language barrier and stuff. We do have um, surtitles, uh, which is the opposite of subtitles. So it's above the stage. And so it will always explain to you what is going on if it's in a different language. Or you can go to English National Opera, which um, all, everything is in translation. So you should know what's, what's going on. So don't worry too much about that. Um, so yeah, in this is me, this is my face, um, this is my name. And uh, yeah, it, uh, opera is, it's an amazing profession. It's hard work, really disciplined, um, but you get to see the world. Um, yeah, it's, and you get to work in some amazing places and it's a really fun career and it's really happy and jolly. And yeah, you'd enjoy it if you did it. Okay, well, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now and answer a few of your questions that I've missed. Um, okay, I'll just close this and go back to this. Okay, what have I missed? Open, answered. Thank you very much. Okay, do you know student when I've answered that one? Um, I feel like I'm kind of a kind of between a mezzo-soprano and an alto, I'm worried that my voice might be too low for most characters that are, um, are my age. Is this something I should be concerned about? Also, have you got any tips for developing a mixed voice? Neve, great. Is this, um, I assume this is musical theatre rather than classical, but um, I can speak about it from both. No, it's, it's nothing to be worried about. Altos, are, genuine altos, contraltos in opera are quite um, unusual. Um, why do my voice might be too low for most characters? You just have to work on getting it higher. I mean, with, you know, it's not a problem at all. And most people will be, you know, wanting the low notes. So we, we all have things that we need to work on. Um, so, you no, know, just keep practicing and uh, developing a mixed voice. Hmm. I don't sing down there a huge amount. Um, I think just not letting it drop too low into your chest. Um, keep it in the mask, keep it quite, quite high. Don't, don't automatically let it drop would probably help. I don't sing down there a huge amount, so um not too sure. Um might be too low for most characters. No, I think you're you're absolutely fine. Don't worry, just 
just keep working on it. It's nothing to be worried about, but we all have things to work on. Um, how do you look after your voice on a, a day-to-day -day basis? Oh, where did that go? Um, so I, uh, I've got a lot better since I've got old, gotten older. Um, I'm looking after it. Uh, I drink a lot of water. We should have about two and a half liters a day or something as a normal person, but for opera, you have to have more. I've even got my water here. I haven't had it a lot. Hmm. Um, try not to get ill <laughs> because uh, we, uh, well, if we don't sing in the shows, we don't get paid. So um, I sleep a lot. Um, I exercise and just generally try and stay as healthy as can be um, and eat well as well. Um, I'm 15, this morning I'm playing Christine in an online concert. I have a, oh, I said keep drinking, I have a water, but not so much on the high notes. Secondly, is that a problem if I want to do opera as a career? No, it's not a problem. I mean, well done that you've got that high E. I've been trying to work on my high E. <laughs> Um, during this lockdown. Um, no, I think it's quite hard to get vibrato on a high E because it pops into a different place. Um, no, if you're 15, no, there's <laughs> not anything to worry about at all. And it's not a problem if you want to do it, um, opera as a career. No, it's not. You will learn how to do that and your voice will develop and it will all happen at some point. So well done you. Wow, that's impressive. Well done, Isabella. Okay, I'm very torn between more classical and musical, musical theatre. I'm probably classed as more of a classical performer, Mrs. Brunner, but I don't have a belting type of voice. Um, Lauren, okay. I'm worried if I go to training first, I'll get my decision. You don't have a belting, you, so you don't have, so we don't belt in, in opera anyway, if that's your, I'm probably because I, because I don't, yes, yeah, that's cool. Um, classical training, I'll get my decision. No, I, you, you, I regret my decision. I mean, I, as I say, you, you must be the same as me, Lauren. I thought that I would regret it and I, um, I didn't. Um, but there are a lot, there's lots of, and I just went into opera, um, but there's lots of musical theatre that doesn't require you to belt and actually just having a really healthy singing voice and healthy technique um, will help you no matter what you sing. Um, so no, I don't think, um, don't worry. Don't worry, you'll be fine. You can come back to it and um and yeah if you're qualified enough i mean yeah just come come back to it see how your voice develops it's your voice will be changing all the time so who can say what will happen um and you might fall in love with opera like i did and become an opera singer which would be great <laughs> on average how much you get paid for ensemble roles and principal roles also which country um did you enjoy perform performing in most um Principal roles, I think in general, your um, pay, you're paid better anywhere but the UK. Um, but uh, I think generally, generally per performance, the, uh, the rates are much better than musical theatre, but we don't get paid for rehearsals. So um, I mean, some of the, some of the big, big opera stars get paid like, crazy money like 120,000 for a contract um or you know it's crazy we're not at that stage certainly not at that stage um but there there is a bit of money in opera but there are there's less work so um which country do I enjoy performing in most hmm I love performing in the UK but I loved going to China that was amazing amazing experience um I perform in France quite a bit and I always enjoy that um everywhere really yeah um i've already answered millie's look after your voice what's your favorite opera Ooh, i love la bohème it's a bit cliche but i love it it's so good um and how do i learn my lines of music in foreign language uh well i'm used to it now i wasn't at first but i um i, I, I did a lot of training in it and it's just repetition really and just working on it um yeah, repetition, that helps me. And um, putting something down and going to sleep when it's not going in, because it'll probably be there the next day. Little top tip, always go to sleep, sleep on it. I want to go into musical theatre, but I think some general classical is invaluable. How should I go about very cool exercises? Um, you want to go to musical theatre? I would say it's always good to um, just go to a classically trained teacher um, and they can lead you through exercises. We do have, um, 
books. There's something called the VACI, which is just um, just a load of technical exercises. Um, so, yeah, you, you should have you should have a teacher to guide you guide you through it. Certainly, um, we it's hard. You you shouldn't listen to yourself when you're singing, and that's what we have to learn. Um, and that's difficult. So you just need a good set of ears to tell you what to do, basically. Um, do you think opera is harder than musical theatre? Um, I think they're completely different. Um, I think musical theatre is hard because you have to dance a lot and it's hard on the voice and it's, you have to do it every, all, for all hours and it's, it's all difficult. But opera is, our main focus is singing. So um, that, that is the hard part about being an opera singer. So I wouldn't say, I think they, they're both hard in, in their own ways. Um, but yeah, singing is probably harder in opera, I'd say. Um, just because you have to be really amazing at it on every single note all the time. I'm fluent in several modern languages. Wow, wow, wow. As there are ever, and there, there are, there are, there are um, Chinese and Spanish. They have, um, they tend to be slightly different. Um, the Chinese ones, they have their own type of opera actually. Um, over there but they do they do um they've started to bring kind of western influences over over there um spanish yeah they do we don't do them so much but there are spanish operas as well i've never done one so i can't speak about it but they do they do exist and there's Fazuela. is that right yeah my husband's nodding in the corner which is um song i think spanish it's funny oh it's opera there you go we're all learning all learning together so yes, there are. I don't know what any of them are called, but they are. Uh, they do exist. I'm doing musical theatre exams, but I like classical. I do think I'd be better doing Irish theatre. Uh, yes, I haven't looked. Um, the I'm sorry. This is answering Heidi. Um, yes, I think ABRSM is great. Um, really good thing to do. I haven't looked at the Trinity ones or anything like that, so I, I couldn't compare them. But from my experience, they were great. If you would have studied musical theatre, what drama school would you have liked to go to? Oh, I don't know. I'm. I don't know what's good at them now. I mean, I, I always had views. I always thought, well, Mount View or GSE or something like that. Um, so yeah, probably something like that. Uh, did you have to sing a musical theatre song at your audition? No, I didn't. It was all, it was song and opera. I think I sang one operatic piece, which was definitely beyond me at the time, but I thought I was great, but it probably wasn't great. Um, but and, yeah, and just song, um, the art song and that you would find on an ABRSM syllabus. Have you ever been in a choir? I can't, uh, no. I, yes I have, I've been in, I was in school choir and, and stuff like that and it's, yeah, it's really neat, it's really good, yeah, for developing your falsetto and um, stuff when you're younger. It's not necessarily a great thing to do when you're um, um, using opera because it's a slightly different technique um, when you're older but for now it's great it's great for your musicianship and learning to sing in an ensemble and working together it's a really good thing to do have you any experience with pop operas I don't know what a pop opera is are they closer to opera or musical theatre I don't know I've never seen one <laughs> um, they sound fun though are they are they in Germany they're really great that sounds good I'll have, have to have a look into it Anyway, that is probably um, it for uh, now. Main piece of advice for auditions, that'll be like my last thing. Be confident, enjoy yourself. Um, panelists always want you to do really well. They don't want you to fail, so they're on your side. Um, so just enjoy it, really. All right then, I um, that's probably it for now. I hope that that's um, helped um, stopping this the overwhelming uh, thought of opera and how you get into it and stuff. I hope that's helped you. Um, if you have any more questions, if you head over to Twitter and tag um, BYMT and tag me as well in a public post, then you can ask questions and I can um, answer from there. Um, yeah, I hope that's been really, really helpful for you. And um, yeah, I have really enjoyed it. So I hope you guys have an amazing weekend and um, yeah. Good luck with your future careers, whether it be musical theatre or opera. Maybe I've convinced you. Who knows? All right, then. Bye.